my college experience uh, initially was uh, one that I would characterize by being lonely, homesick, very homesick, um, uh, very young. I was 17, uh, immature. Um, I don't know at what age men are ever as mature as women, but it certainly wasn't at, at, at 17. Um, I had no uh, declared major. I had no purpose for being in college other than that my parents made me do it. Um, I um, um, had left a, a girlfriend back home, and back home was 600 miles away. Um, I did not have uh, college-level study habits. Uh, in summary, it was a prescription for disaster. My first year of college was awful. Uh, I, I just decided right in the middle of my first year that I wasn't going to finish. But I, I left Duke after my sophomore year. Um, I uh, found a, a fella uh, and got married and left and was gone for 10 years. My first grades were three Fs, two Ds, and an A. And the only way I got out of that, that abysmal uh, performance was uh, by uh, getting a, a new academic advisor who um, genuinely cared about me and could help me make a better set of decisions and especially what got me out was um, finding um, an older, wiser student and beginning to emulate his uh, success strategies, particularly uh, learning how to take lecture notes. And my grandmother, who was an immigrant, came over, who came over from Russia, had never had an education, just gave me holy hell. And uh, she said, I have a friend, she has a granddaughter who's on the the University of Maryland newspaper. Here's the number, call her. Well, I very timidly called and uh, I was there working that night and it just transformed me. I became part of a group. Uh, we call it engagement today. Uh, now I know the importance of it. Uh, back then it just sort of happened. We didn't call it anything. And so I came back to Duke 10 years later and had sort of a totally different first year experience. Um, it was an experience as an adult. I was self-motivated at that point, wasn't concerned about relationships. Uh, I was in class uh, every time the, the doors opened. Uh, I never missed. I never skipped. And it was a much richer experience for me. So, you know, as I think about my college experience, it was in two phases. Uh, one in the early 1960s uh, when I was 18 and really in many ways not ready for college as many students are today, and then in the 1970s when I was an adult and much more self-motivated. So um, uh, the first year um, uh, I almost didn't make it, ended up on academic probation, lucky to get off. Uh, my goal uh, in life ever since has been to uh, ensure that uh, college students don't have an abysmal beginning like I had. Uh, I, I don't like to see students fail. If they don't do the work, they fail, but, but I keep kicking them and keep kicking them because I think that's what a good teacher does. Um, I also was very much into uh, advising, and not just academic advising, personal counseling. Uh, and all of that came out of the training for the freshman seminar course. Not only was there no right book, there was no book at all for the first year seminar. And we desperately felt we needed one. We had hundreds and hundreds of students taking this course. And without a textbook, it didn't look like a real college course. So we wanted a real college textbook for a real college course. Based on our conversations with faculty and staff at both two-year and four-year colleges, public and private, we think one of the critical issues in student success is this whole sense of purpose. And so um, as we have worked to revise through the years the order of chapters in our books and what might be a good opening for the book, we created the first chapter as exploring your purpose for college. And uh, we think that if we can help students clarify a sense of purpose for going to college, that that will be motivational for them. Uh, my role as an advisor uh, made me realize that this textbook had to be written uh, for the whole student, uh, not, not just the academic side of the student, but uh, the, the, the affective side of the student, I mean, the life of the student. Uh, so our topics go from study skills, which we, we, we have a, a huge number of pages on, but they also cover uh, things like uh, health, wellness, stress, uh, sexuality, uh, diversity, uh, because we know that's part of what helps students make it through their first year. 
In summary, this is a very comprehensive approach. It looks at the whole student. It's holistic. Anything that might affect student success is fair game for our textbooks. It's reflected in the comprehensive content and in what we urge instructors to do in these courses.